Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP. Today on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at the installation for the Rago Fabrication Toyota 4Runner dash mount. Very nice custom piece. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Okay, folks, here you can see the Rago Fabrication dash mount for the 5th uh, Gen Toyota 4Runner. Uh, Rago Engineering does create uh, custom parts for a lot of different vehicles. They do tend to specialize on uh, Toyota vehicles, Tacomas and Tundras and 4Runners, FJ Cruisers, and so forth. But they've got stuff for Jeeps and Fords and Chevys and uh, other vehicles. Um, a lot of it is stainless steel, uh, and you can either get uh, many of their components, either bare metal or pre-powder coated. The uh, dash mount here comes powder coated automatically and is very nicely packaged in a box with what looks to be uh, uh, die cut foam so that all the pieces are, are well separated and protected from each other. And, you know, nothing should arrive scratched or, or, or chipped or beat up. Uh, and the, uh, the unit uh, itself is laser cut uh, steel. Um, everything looked great. The finish, fit and finish was great. Uh, anything that needed to be pre-drilled and tapped was. And, of course, all the hardware was included. I uh, didn't have anything missing from, uh, from the kit or the box, as we can kind of see here as we, uh, as we look at the, uh, the hardware components for this install. So taking a look at this, I just wanted to point out a couple things before we sort of get started in the uh, demonstration of the install itself. You can see all the components here for this kit. You've got the main bracket, and for the Forerunner, this is going to sit very nice and tight at the top of your dash, right where the uh, built-in clock would be. Uh, so you can see there's sort of a cutout there along the front so that you can see the, the clock. Now it does uh, block your viewing angle to the clock um, from certain angles from the driver's seat and passenger seat, but um, it doesn't block it completely and you can, can kind of still see the clock. Of course, in the more modern uh, vehicles, you've got your entertainment system and that screen has a clock on it as well. So the, the older clock built into the dash really isn't as necessary in these vehicles anymore. Uh, but it's still there, and uh, and this doesn't block it completely by any means. Uh, you've got the two side brackets. Uh, those are accessory brackets. You can use either one um, or both or, or none of them. Uh, all the hardware is there to mount those. We went ahead and mounted those in our installation uh, because on the driver's side, that's where, as you'll see, we're going to mount a, a phone mount. We used a phone mount and a tablet mount for this application. The, the tablet mount on the passenger side uh, is for the uh, front end operation of the uh, FT991 Alpha amateur radio uh, and then of course classic phone mount on the driver's side to uh, uh, for navigation and those kinds of things. Uh, we were putting this together for a 10-day road trip from Kentucky to California and back and seeing some sites along the way as well so we had a great time on the trip and it worked uh, worked perfectly for us. So as you look at this hardware kit you can see the stainless steel screws uh, there in the center. Those uh, are to hold your accessories and the brackets and things. You see the two aluminum spacers. Those are for the top. And you see the screw uh, sets at the bottom. So the short black screws with the washers and the lock nuts, those are for the sides of the unit. And there is drilling required. The two long screws are for the top of the unit, and they go through those aluminum spacers. And uh, so those are the four holes you'll have to drill for this unit, two on the side and two on the top. Uh, so putting the bracket up and getting those uh, marked is something you're going to want to do very, very carefully. Because of the way the Forerunner is, at least, the radio main head unit, uh, the, the bezel, the plastic bezel that you're going to be cutting into or drilling into, uh, it's all part of the same unit. So it's not a case of if you mess up, you can just order a new bezel. Uh, the way that radio head unit is designed, it's all one thing. So this is definitely a case of measure twice, drill once. I would say measure three times, drill once. 
and having an extra set of hands can be very helpful for this. Uh, I did it by myself. Uh, you'll you'll see a couple other videos online that show people doing this by themselves. It can be done. Go slowly. Take your time. Make sure you get things set up where you want them. Uh, mark your holes and um, and then drill accordingly. And uh, it, it's not really a scary installation per se. Uh, you're drilling into that bezel. But um, uh, it's really not all that difficult. The, the dash comes apart fairly easily. We'll kind of see some of that. And um, you can set it up and, and mark things. And, um, and as you get into it, then you can start using the screws to actually help keep the alignment, you know, once you start to mark uh, other parts of the bracket. So on the uh, Forerunner dashboard, these little side components right here, uh, to pull those out, you, you rotate them from the center to the outside. You should see that right there. You rotate them from the center to the outside, and they should just pop out. Uh, a lot of these these dashboards see those kind of yellow clips and things uh, they just pop into uh, recesses so you rotate that from the center to the outside and I actually had to put some gloves on uh, because there's not a lot of purchase there with your fingers and of course it's kind of smooth plastic and uh, it was slipping a bit so I put on some gloves and was able to, uh, to you know just snap those right out and so you do the left and the right kind of the same way you just rotate from the center to the outside uh, and those will come out then this little central part slides right out and it has one cable connection which uh, you can either just let it dangle or you can use your uh, needle nose pliers and just uh, you know crimp that little clip and it'll come out of the, the plastic uh, housing there so it's just one uh, connection there if you want to go ahead and take that apart uh, easy enough to do again just those yellow clips it just snaps into the dashboard now the main head unit is is held in place with these four 10 millimeter bolts and that's what the, the 10 millimeter socket and, and ratchet are for, uh, or if you're going to use your drill driver. So you just take those four bolts out with your 10 millimeter, and the head unit slides straight forward and has a few connections on the back. They're all uh, keyed, so you can't put it back together incorrectly. They're all shaped and keyed. Uh, I just let it dangle. I was just sort of careful and let it dangle because uh, I, I wasn't really going to have it uh, it out for that long and I was able to drill what I needed to drill without fully removing it. It may be a little easier for some folks to go ahead and take it all the way out. Again, there's a few of those uh, gang plugs on the back and they're all a uh, specific size and shape. So again, you can't really get them wrong. So if you want to just disconnect those, that wouldn't really be a problem either. So here we've got the uh, some of the bolts out. Again, you just take those four bolts out and uh, and it's not going to fall down right when you take those bolts out so don't be too worried about that you can see it's sitting there and then you just slide it straight forward towards uh you know towards the interior of the vehicle and it'll uh it'll just slide right out of there so uh it's really not too difficult again use gloves to take those side components off now here i'm just doing some test fitting of the bracket uh, on the plastic bezel for the the dash and the head unit and basically what you want to do is you just want to keep all of your uh, all of the edges and everything even, uh, as even as you can get them. So again, this is a part where you really want to take your time. And if you have an extra set of hands, that can be helpful to help hold this up there. Here you can see I, I measured, I marked, I drilled the side holes, and then I just stuck the screws in there. That's all I did. I just stuck the screws in there to help keep it aligned. And then you put the spacers up top, and, um, and you can put the screws in there temporarily just to uh, to kind of hold that part so as you're marking each of the endpoints and once you've got the endpoints done uh, and you're you're spacing you know where you want it uh, then again you've got the spacers up top once you've got it where you want it um, what I've seen other people do and what I did and it, it worked fine is I carefully took those top screws out left the spacers right where they were and I just went ahead and drilled right through that those points I didn't remove everything again I left the side screws in just to keep my as a marker uh, and kind of as an index point and then you just I had enough room between the top of this and the windshield I was able to just go ahead and drill right through those spacers and that gave me my pretty much my perfect spacing uh, then you just take things out and uh, take the head unit back out that's where you're uh, one of the places definitely where you're gonna want those needle nose pliers uh, because in order to get the screws to go in uh, you need to be able to hold that lock washer from the back side, the inside of the bezel, so you can screw into it. And, of course, when you screw into those nylon lock washers, 
Uh, it takes a little bit of force with the screwdriver. Of course, that's sort of the whole point. And so you have to be able to hold that nut. There, there's not a, uh, it's not a captured, you know, nut or anything. So uh, that's one place where the, the needle nose pliers uh, comes in extremely handy. Once you, uh, you get all that screwed in, I mean, it's just drill four holes and then hold the, the nuts. You know, it takes just a, take your time, a little finagling to, uh, uh, to get those in just right. That's it. That, those are the four connection points. And it creates a very strong, very stable connection to the bezel of uh, the head unit. And, of course, then once you bolt the head unit back in, uh, you've got plenty of strength. Uh, here you can see it's, it's up there. You can still see the clock. Uh, if you uh, if you get down just a little bit, of course, again, as you can see, the head unit has a clock, too. Uh, and then uh, we used, uh, again, a tablet mount and a phone mount. Uh, and there's uh, we used, um, uh, you know, the, the ball joint type mounts here. And uh, there's all kinds of, of these, these kinds of mounts. There's different brands and things um, and different uh, strength levels. Uh, for, for lightweight accessories or more heavy accessories. This is a, a, a larger one for the tablet because I knew it was going to have some weight to it. And I went one size down for just the phone uh, phone unit to, uh, you know, to do that. Um, and then you can move things around, uh, you know, if you wish as well. So there's uh, the RAM mount um, for the phone. It's the, the, the kind of the standard unit. They have one smaller size ball from this and one larger size ball. So went with the, the standard mount for the phone. Uh, you know, modern cell phones are, are fairly large. Uh, this worked great for this. You know, there's not a lot of jiggle and wiggle or any of that stuff, and it, it puts it right there. And then, again, their larger ball system for the tablet, which, again, worked great. Uh, it's not a real heavy tablet, but it's a 10-inch tablet. And uh, I use that as the, uh, the front-end control for, uh, again, for the FT991 Alpha radio. So there's that larger ball. And um, when I'm not uh, working with the radio or doing that, I can just take the main mounting arm off and uh and the ball's there uh but the whole thing's very low profile uh and uh, uh you know this was not my vehicle this is my wife's daily driver uh and it's uh, fairly new to her and <laughs> you know her her you know i was surprised she said uh, okay i'll let you <laughs> i'll let you put a radio in my vehicle especially for this trip coming up and everything but um it can't look ugly <laughs> don't it, it don't make it look ugly she didn't she didn't like some of the things I did for my car, I went for more practicality uh, in my car. So I spent some extra time and some extra money to buy these custom components and things and to try to set up the radio and mount the radio in such a way that uh, it wasn't going to be obtrusive. It wasn't going to block her vision. And that's one thing I liked about the, uh, the Rego dash mount. It's very low profile, very uh, nice looking, very high quality. And like this, this arm that holds the tablet, you know, you can just take it off and leave the ball and there's not much there. And it's all well below the sight line of the dash and the hood and everything. So I uh, definitely recommend check out um, Rego Fabrication. They've got a lot of components there. Again, for a lot of vehicles, although they specialize in Toyota vehicles, which are very popular, but they have a lot of other uh, vehicle components there. Uh, very high quality. All right, so as we start to wrap this one up, folks, uh, we're going to take a short listen to uh, some reception I was getting with the radio and, and as I was controlling it with the Win for Yesu software. Win number four Yesu software works really well from uh, Windows computers. This is a Windows tablet. And we'll take a quick listen to some reception I was getting with the radio, and uh, that's coming up right uh, now. All right, so it was working great. Uh, really fun project, uh, not completely done. We're going to go over some more of it uh, with you folks, but that'll uh, wrap this one up. Rago Fabrication, check them out, folks. They've got some really high quality products. Uh, this is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We will see you folks in the next video. 73.